Hi, I'm Corey. Welcome to Creating with Scraps. This is the next in the series, uh, Building a Scrap Buster Idea Book. And I was hoping that I would be able to finish the pages today, but life happened and I was not. So the next four, um, I think it's 28, 29, 30, and 31. And then we'll finish up the last five pages tomorrow, which is Tuesday, the 13th of July. All right. In the original book, these are the pages. There's a mail slot with a journaling card and a uh, button spot. And the next page, well, I'll just finish these up. And then the next page, so that's 28, 29. 29 is a double-sided corner pocket with just a journaling card on it. This one's a collage journaling card, but the idea was any old journaling card. And then the following one was that other side of that corner pocket. And I don't have a, a Scrap Buster video that shows how to make those, I don't think. Um, so I'll show you really quickly. It's a pretty straightforward process. And I'm, I imagine there's more than one way to do it, but I'll just show you how I do it. And then this was with a scrap card. And again, this is just using a regular card in an envelope that I've used scraps on. And then the last pages, again, I've shown how to do the windows, but not necessarily the framed windows. And so I'll show that. And that's one of the reasons, time-wise, that I'm just going to do these four tonight. All right. So that is the original. And here is what I've done, how I've changed it up a little bit, um, to, you know, just to suit the pages in this book. Okay, here we go. So this is the journaling slot, or the mailbox. I guess that's a better way to put it. It's a mailbox slot. And in this particular case, I used a piece of vellum, and I used the um, slot hole punch to create the piece at the top. And then there's a button spot on the bottom and a trifle journaling card. Just It's actually a blank piece of paper goes into the spot here. And... I've already shown how to make this on the channel. I've shown how to make these and I've shown how to make these. So all I'd really be doing on the other book, the book that we're working in, is gluing it down. And, and that's pretty self-explanatory. So I didn't, I didn't um, wait to assemble this. I made it based on those videos and then I just glued it in place. And uh, so that's how we did that, basically. All right. So that was page 28. So 29. Page 29 is the first side of this corner spot. And let me make sure I'm in place here. And then on this one, because of the colors, I just took some ledger paper and sewed it together and tucked it underneath. So this one's got the double-sided corner. It's got a lace edged paper clip, and that's just to hold this corner that fits over the top of the page on tightly, and then a button spot. And I did the button spot to kind of balance when I put some French knots on there because it needed a little bit of something. And I did it just to balance the button spot on the previous corner. And I also kept this page, this set of pages, really simple in contrast to the busy pages we had on the day before. And again, when you're flipping through and looking for ideas, it's really great for you to be able, you, me, it's really great for me to be able to see that um, I can balance the really embellished pages with a little bit more simple pages. And I'll show you how to make this corner and on, it's a double side and we'll do that now. All right, so here's my page and it's, um, oops, I wasn't supposed to keep that on there. Well, that's okay. We will, oh, I know I did something else to show you. Um, so here is my page and, and I kind of coordinated the colors so that it would pick up a little bit of the pink that's over here with a little bit of the pink that's over here. And this was a 12 by 12 piece of vellum and I cut it down to fit, that's the Tim Holtz vellum, to fit what I wanted to save and show on, to balance these two pages together. All right. So here is my corner, and I wanted to show you something with the corner. Now, because there's writing on this page, it makes it tougher for corners. But I wanted this pink color to pick up the pink in here and over here and over here. So I wanted to use this paper, but I didn't, I mean, unless I cut down a whole new page, I could only have the print going in the correct direction on one side. So one way or the other, the print would have to be upside down. And I didn't really care for that, but I thought, I could show you a way that you can still make it work for you. 
and I'll show you, I'll put this part together and then I'll show you how I created the corner. So double-sided corner just fits over the top of your page, right? Like so. And because I wanted to hide the upside down words, sorry about my squeaky chair, because I wanted to hide those upside down words, I just put some, some bits of scrap in here. Well, there's just that little bit of yuck on there. It's not yuck, really. It's just a different color thread. But you know, I guess that different color thread matches there. So I'll do that. So I'm going to use this little scrap of lace and my Fabri-Tac. I guess I need to refill this because it takes a while to come down. So I'm going to use this little scrap of lace and my Fabri-Tac to put it down. And you'll still be able to see the words, but you won't be able to read them. And you won't you won't notice, well, hopefully you won't notice that they are upside down. And that's just something, you know, nature, <coughs> excuse me, nature of the beast. Um, sometimes it happens that way. So I glued that down. And then this is just, I think these are, again, Tracy Fox little labels with birds, but they may not be. I, I've had them in my bin so long, I honestly don't know, but I think they're Tracy's. Somebody asked me to find, or they couldn't find the, the flowers, and I didn't have time today to do that, but I will make an effort tomorrow. Um, I don't have anywhere that I have to go or have to be tomorrow, so I'll make an effort to see if I can't find those. And I put that down, and then I thought it needed one more little thing, so what I did is I just um, used a tiny bit of thin ribbon, and I made a bow. And just a little bit of a Fabri-Tac, or a big old glob. Here we go. And I'll put that down in that corner. And I think that'll stay. And so that's a way I was able to, I don't know about hide, but kind of disguise and not draw attention to the fact that the words were upside down. All right. And then I also put in here, oh gosh, there's the glue in my fingers. Sorry, on my hand, the um, Fabri-Tac glue. And here is another one of those Tim Holtz clips, and I could have done, I can do this to hold it in place if I want. Or I thought, well, I wanted something a little bit more feminine to tie in the lace and lace and then lace. So I did a paper clip with a little bit of um, lace at the top. So I'll use that on another page. And again, I deliberately didn't stamp this or stencil this or ink this or put anything extra on it because I have plenty going on with these two bits. And I will just tuck it underneath here as a place to write. All right. And before we go into this page, I will show you how I make these. This, for this particular size, uh, let's see so you can see it. There we go. For this particular size, I have a four and a half square. And I cut that four and a half square at the diagonal. So I'm cutting it from corner to corner. And I don't really know that there's, I guess if, if I was being mindful of the way the print was, there's no print on this one, so I'm, I'm in the clear. But I could be, I could do it either way, depending on what I needed. And I don't think it really matters on this one. I will just cut it from corner to corner. All right. Then I get my scoring tool or my scoring board. I'll move that that way, I guess. And I want to measure in, I'm going to be using the two shorter sides of my triangle, right? So I'm going to measure in one half inch and score it. And then I'm going to turn it on its side because, again, I want to score both of my shorter pieces. I don't want to do the long side. And then, once again, at one half inch and score it, right? And where they meet, there's a little corner. And I just cut straight across the top of that corner like that. And I take it, and I don't even save this one. I toss it. So corner to corner. Then I fold where I've scored it, I fold it in on both pieces. And you can see here they overlap just a tiny bit. And I'll, I'll trim that just a smidge. I They can overlap, but I'd prefer that they didn't because it creates extra bulk. And because it's cardstock, 
going to use my bone folder and press it down a bit. And then I'll flip it over so that the top side's up and I'll just use the edge of the long leg of the triangle to trim off that triangle corner where I folded it over just like that. All right. So I've got the piece where the other side is going to attach is basically what I've done. And on the other one, I don't use the, the um, scoreboard. I just cut it and I do the same thing. I'm going to cut the two short sides of this triangle and I'm going to cut off one half inch on each one. And so this measures to four and a half. I need it to go to four. And I'll cut off that half inch piece, throw it in my bin. And then I'm going to do the opposite side. So now it should be four, right? I'm going to move it into three and a half and trim off that angle. So one I scored folded and the other I trimmed. And in a perfect world, when I lay these together, they should match up. All right. I'll put glue. Well, maybe I'll put glue. I had the lid off on this for hours, so I don't know if I'll be able to put glue. Well, heck, let me get a stainless steel pen and that'll start it up. But yeah, I, I filled this up today and I had the lid off for a really long time. And um, I think I made it mad. All right. Okay, glue. And I will lay this piece and I don't go to the edge with the glue because I don't want these two pieces to glue other than on that hinge where they're meeting. I don't want them to adhere further down because then I won't be able to tuck it over both sides of the corner. All right. And then I would just ink around the edges, right? And there you go. Double sided corner. And then that's all there is to it. Again, I would ink around the edges, but if one side is a smidge longer than the other, it's not going to show because one's on one side and one's on the other. All right. And that is how you make your double sided corner. Okay. Next page. So page 30. All right. And you noticed I put just because the ledger paper didn't work well here, I just used the blank coffee paper, copy paper that was coffee dyed. But here I liked the ledger because I liked the color play. On this side, I have a scrap card with the negative or the positive space of the die. Now on one of the other pages in this book, we, here we go. We used the negative space of the die to make a tuck or a belly band, right? Well, this is the same exact piece. I just inked it and then used the Seth after vintage beeswax embossing powder to emboss it. And you can see it gives it a totally different color and a different look. But again, because this is an idea book showing how you can use both the positive and negative space. And these are just little bits and scraps. And I, I just selected colors that I thought worked with this item and I'll tuck it. You can use this as a card. You could send it to somebody. It's all right, magpie. It's okay, baby. Um, and oops, it's easier to tuck it under without that on there. Okay, like that. And I'll show you how we did it over here. And it was just a little bit different. Um, not a lot different, just a little bit. So you can see here, I tried to pick up the colors that were in here. I made sure that one of my strips um, or scrap strips had a little bit of pink in it. And there's a little bit of pink in this one. and. I, the same exact thing. This is a little bit more um, feminine because of the pink. So I put a little bit of ribbon here and made sure I included those colors. And that is that one. All right. Page 31 is the window frame. Now we did it on another page and I showed it in a video with this. Here you go. This is the same idea, but this is a double sided. Well, here it's one sided and I framed the whole page to save some leaves that I um, preserved from last fall. 
And these are just, again, scraps around a piece of transparency. Now, I, I shared that I use these report cover folders that I got at a yard sale, but any acetate or transparency or window film or whatever from packaging or what have you will work just fine. And I will show you how I made this because it's just a tiny bit different. And oh, I just wanted the color wise a little bit more of this color to, to one, two, three, balance it through. So I just used a full edge of this is the braille paper. All right. And here it is here. We'll put it, we'll put it on here. Now what I did on this one to, this is a different leaf and I liked the color of this leaf on this page and it's really pretty big which was fine because the pattern paper on this is really big and all I did to get it down was I used some glue stick and then I just put this right on top of it and then I glued this was a, a definition and I believe these are also Tracy Fox she has like nature and leaf and uh, flora fauna grass stem woodlands that kind of thing so those are those labels and here is the frame and what I did to do the frame, I was intentional about, okay, so I made sure that the color combinations worked here and I made sure that I included some pink bits that would carry over here. And then there's pink in this line over here, but I also wanted to pick up the blues and the greens and then the print. So not because I want one over the other or I prefer one to the other, I just want the pages to flow well. And I, because this is such a big leaf, I kind of moved it over a bit so that you could see the edges of some and you know not the whole thing and again it just kind of hides some of that really big overwhelming blue and when I cut this down I make sure that it doesn't go all the way to the edge I find that this glues okay and it stays in place but I also want to make double sure so I'm wanting to make sure that I use paper to paper so the outside edge of this does not have the acetate or window transparency on it and then I'll go in around the edge and I'll clamp it in place and I'll show you how I did that and I'll sh put, put we'll put one together to um, put one together on screen here on film so that um, you can see how what my process is and it's just my process there's a lot of others as well I got some feedback that people like the microphone, so I'm, I'm hoping I'm wearing it at a good spot and that it allows you to hear better. It, ironically funny. One of, um, I don't want to say a complaint, but you know, usually when you, when you get feedback about anything, it's, for me, it's, you're, well, you're loud. Corey, you're loud. And my husband, shh, Corey, you're being loud. And my daughter, shh, mom, you're being loud. So to be told that I'm soft-spoken is truly ironic. In fact, um, when I was teaching first grade, I had a mom come in, a sweet, sweet mom. She asked if she could come watch the kids. So I said, sure, I love it when parents come in and see how we engage with each other in our class. And um, the kids, you know, she was there for a while and then the kids went to specials or lunch or something. And the mom came up to me and said that the reason she had um, wanted to come in is because her son, she was a single mom and it was just her and her son. And first grade was his, his first year at school. He did, had, she had chosen not to, whoops, I didn't line that up. She had chosen not to send him to kindergarten. She, she trained him or taught him for kindergarten. And she said, you know, when he, when he would come home from school every day, um, how was your day? What did you do? What did Mrs. Dahman teach you? What did you learn? And he said, well, Mrs. Dahman yelled at me. Mrs. Dahman yelled at the kids today and he'd said that several times and so I will always appreciate her rather than calling me on the phone or sending me an email why are you yelling at the kids she came into class and observed herself and she said you know I, I wanted to see what was going on before I said anything and you don't yell you're just loud and this lady was really soft-spoken and she said it's just been me and him for so long that that's all he's really used to and so somebody who's just naturally loud especially over a group of kids he thinks that's yelling he considers that yelling so I was more conscientious about being more soft-spoken and she talked to him about you know different volumes and tone of voice and such when you've got you know at that point I think I had 31 first graders so anyway for bad to have people tell me that I'm soft-spoken just kind of what wait a minute are you talking about me it just didn't you know um 
didn't resonate with me because I've, I've that's not something I've been accused of. I was a cheerleader for years too, and one of the things that they said, that one of the reasons they said they selected me is because I'm loud. So anyway, I'm glad the microphone is working. All that to say, I'm really glad that the microphone is helping uh, modulate or regulate the tones that you're able to hear. All right, so clamp, 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 and that is that page. And I'll put it aside and I will show you how I made it. Hmm. Oh, I know what this is for. This is for this. All right. What I did was I cut a piece of that film one half inch smaller than the dimensions of my page. So just a half inch, so quarter inch all the way around, right? And then I looked at the page that I was working on next to it. And once again, I'm going to use the actual lines on, on my workstation to make it fit where I want it. Okay, you probably can't see that. I'm going to move it up one so you can see a little bit. Or you may not be able to see it well, but I use this to make sure my borders are okay. And then what I do is I just grab some strips and I start laying them down, depending on what colors I need. Um, and then there's, I have a lot of the same ones in here because these are the leftover bits from, from um, the cover piece that we did. I'll just start Let's see, I want this to be six inches. Oh, I know what I need to do. I need to turn it this way because of the, because of the, um, the hinge that we made, the, the pages are just a little bit different sized. So it's a five and a half by six instead. And so I'll just, I'll ink the edges and I'll, I'll lay them out and I'll try to put, you know, the bigger pieces in the corners and I'll choose different sizes, different fonts, different widths. Now, if I like something, and I'll ink them. I'm not going to do that here because you know what inking looks like. I'll um, overlap it a little bit if I've got, I feel like if it's too much or too big. And um, like this one, it's definitely too big. So maybe I'll do something like this and then I'll trim it off when I'm done. And oh, maybe, maybe like this. This will be a shorter video simply because it is roasting in here. I, I keep a fan on during the day, but um, it makes loud, obnoxious sounds when I'm videoing. So I turn it off for that. All right. Then I, once I've got it, excuse me, once I've got it laid out the way I want it, right? Uh, if I'm going to put green there, I need to put some green over here. Once I've got it laid out the way I want it, I just glue it in place and then I'll take it to my sewing machine and I sew all the way around the edge. And that, that's pretty much all I do to make this, to make this thing work. And then again, because I've got that uh, quarter inch all the way around of paper versus transparency, I'm sure it'll stick real well. I could also just sew it directly on my page and that's actually how I would do it if I hadn't, um, Put the pages in the book and then putting putting the pieces on the pages and i you know i do both depending on what my needs are for a specific journal many times i will if there's going to be something that needs to be sewn i'll determine that before i put the journal together but in this case because it's an idea book and um i wanted to have all the pages done and then we could add the pieces to the pages i, I did it in a, a little bit different order and that is how we do that all right couple of questions that I was going to answer. Um, link my Etsy shop. The biggest reason I haven't linked my Etsy shop all the time is because I, I only have stuff in my Etsy store every once in a while and my goal isn't to sell anything. I don't share these videos because I want to sell things. I share these videos because I like sharing what I've learned and what works for me. But I will try to be more conscientious uh, about putting the Etsy shop in, especially when I've got more items to, um, to sell. Somebody asked where I get the Braille books. Now I get mine through Seedlings, which is a Braille book company. I don't know if you have to be a teacher in order to purchase from them, or I wouldn't think so because if you've got you know a sight impaired person in your family, you would want to be able to have access to it. But that's Seedlings, S-E-E-D-L-I-N-G-S. Seedlings is where I get my Braille books. Uh, Tracy's flowers, I mentioned that. Paper clip swirl. Somebody asked if I would show how I do the paper clip swirl. And this is not my idea. I believe Tracy Fox was the first, she was the first person I saw do it, but I know other people do it as well. No, 
that's wrong. I saw Mrs. Cog from um, Mrs. Cog's Crafts do it first, and she referenced Tracy, which I think is maybe how I found Tracy. But anyway, here it is with a double, this is the uh, three inch, or no, I'm sorry. This is the two inch paper clip, so it's a little bit heavier, and that's just a double swirl. When I do these, I don't like to do the coated or laminated paper clips because it's just wonky. And then here is just one of the small, I don't know, I guess it's one and a quarter inch clips. And the way I do it, is I use it about halfway. If I just go to the, the to the tip of these things, it's not quite strong enough to turn it without getting wonky. So I go about half halfway down, I don't know, third of the way down the barrel of the needle nose jewelry pliers. I guess that's what they're called. And then I will turn it about a quarter of a turn, right? And can you see, can you even see that? And then I will come in at about the same spot and I'll turn it the remainder of the way so that it's all the way down. And I can do the same thing on the inside. I just have to be really careful with the smaller ones because of, it will bend. It bends really easy. And then it's, I don't just mean the tip bends, but the, the, the curve, the natural paper clip curve bends. And I don't want it to, um, change the shape of the paper clip. I just want to curl the end. And I do the same thing. I curved it about not quite uh, a quarter of the way on this one. And I'll hold it tight. And whoops, I have to do a little bit further. I don't have it as close as I normally would because of it. And so that is how I curl the paper clips. And I somebody mentioned that you can purchase them this way. You can purchase them curled. But um, you know, I, I got these at a yard sale for maybe 50 cents. So, and I, Lord knows I have plenty of paper clips. So it just makes more sense for me to do that. All right. Paper clip, clip swirl, badge punch. Somebody was asking the punch that I used to make the slot on here. I'll pull it up over here. Whoops. Where did it go? Oh, here it is. This is the punch that I use to make this slot. Now you don't have to have a punch. You can do a circle at each end and then uh, line it up and use your uh, cutting mat and your straight edge and then just cut between the circles to make your slot. But this is just quick and easy. So, and then what this is called, I bought mine on Amazon and it's called an ID card hole punch or a slot punch or a badge hole punch. It's all of those names and it was roughly $10. So that is that one, that question answered. Um, oh, somebody asked me, somebody who purchased an ink box. And yes, I make the ink boxes, but I also have a video that shows how you can make one if you either have tools or have access to tools or are handy with tools or that type of thing. Um, somebody wanted a white one and I, I made it for, but just be aware because of the ink, you can see on mine, you know, I get the edge of this all the time, which is one of the reasons I chose a dark stain. But somebody asked how you take care of the wood. Well, you can certainly use um, wood furniture polish if it gets really dull, you know, and that works just fine. But I, because I like, I use this for my old school desk that I refurbished and I use it on wood projects, products. This is a tongue oil finish and it's, it's great. And as far as I'm aware, it's safe for everything. And yes, DeWalt is my tool of preference. Somebody asked me about that. Oh shoot, I forgot to bring in a towel. Well, I use I use shop towels normally, but I'll just grab a paper towel today because I think that will work just as well. I normally use a polishing cloth, but, but this will work. And it's just, it's oil and it's designed for wood and I have no idea what tongue is, if it's a seed or a plant or something. But anyway, it works for, and it's just kind of like an oil. And if the wood gets dried out, I just rub a little of the oil over it and it absorbs into the wood. And if I do this like tonight, it'll be dry and what have you by tomorrow morning. And same thing, I just do the whole, do it all over the, all of the wood. And it gives the sheen back. And if your wood's getting really dry, any of your wood, um, unfinished wood. And what I mean by that is if you've got like a polycrylic or um, polyurethane or some kind of top coat like that, some finishing coat, then obviously the tongue oil won't work because it's already been protected by the poly. 
but for your unfinished stained unfinished wood tongue oil works great or furniture polish which you know you just have to do a little bit more frequently the tongue oil will last quite a bit longer and and that's that so that is how I zhuzh up my um, my ink box uh, let's see what what else was I asked uh, Nouveau crystal glaze somebody asked the name of the glaze that I use and where I get it it's called Nouveau crystal glaze and I know you can get it at um, scrapbook.com well I'm assuming you can get it at scrapbook.com uh, any stamp company uh, I get it on Amazon just because I can and I do but this is what I use Nouveau crystal glaze it's not spendy. One of these bottles lasts a good long while, even when I'm using it quite a bit. Somebody asked about this. These are knitting needle tip covers. And I bought these for at the Daiso, at Daiso, which is the Japanese dollar store. And I have to be honest, this, this color bugs me. So I ordered some from Amazon because I had an Amazon credit. But, and they just haven't arrived yet. But it's just a knitting needle cap. And the one I ordered on Amazon has different sizes. So it'll be interesting to see how that works. But those are knitting needle tip covers. Somebody asked where I get the Seth Apter Vintage Beeswax. And some folks said that they're having a hard time in the UK getting it. Somebody else said in Australia it was a challenge. I ordered mine from emeraldcreek.co, not com, because it's a Colorado company. And it takes a while to get here, but but that's where I get mine. And then my last question that I've got written down here, why do I celebrate my half birthday? And kind of funny, when my husband and I were, when, we, when our kids were little, when we were first married, my birthday's in January and um, you know, we never seemed to have much money after Christmas. You know, we were always recuperating. Um, my daughter Joni's birthday is at the end of January, and so we would save for that, and then, you know, recovering from Christmas and the new year and the new things and, and what have you. We just never seem to have much money right around my birthday. And my husband's not a gift giver kind of a person anyway, so not a big deal for him. So we used to joke that I would let him make it up to me at my half birthday, which is July 12th. So that's where the half birthday originated. But then my sister and I realized um, my birthday is January 12th and hers is July 11th which means her half birthday is January 11th and my half birthday is one day after her birthday. So we use that as an excuse to take vacations and do things and go out to eat and that kind of thing. So that's why half birthday. And yeah, I do. I celebrate it today. I got myself a, a coffee from Starbucks and I was going to go out to dinner, but um, I had a dental issue that I had to deal with, which was one of the reasons I didn't get more pages done today and so I just wasn't really in the mood to eat but I'll hold it I'll hang on to that half birthday and I'll go out to eat a different day all right tomorrow should finish this up and then I'll probably have a day or two in between and then hopefully I will be able to show you this Tamperia forest book that's the goal that's the plan thank you very much for watching and happy creating